Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to this video on creating a tower defense game in Unity. Today we are going to be creating a level selector. So some kind of menu that will display the amount of levels that we have in our game and then the user can click on them to go to that level. We still don't transition between levels so if you complete one level it won't actually take you to the next one. That's something we'll add in a future video. And also all of these um, levels are unlocked immediately. We still have to do some way of maybe unlocking levels as we go. That could be something really fun to add. And of course, we also need more levels. But I thought we would start with the level selector and then um, work from there. So let's just jump right into Unity. And what I want to do is just base this off one of the uh, already existing scenes that we have. Whoops, don't want to save this one. And I thought we would just work off the main menu because it has this background and that feels nice and also we only have the scene fader and not a lot else in here so let's just duplicate the main menu and let's rename this to level selector and or select or whatever i'm just going to do level select actually and uh, let's double click on level select so you can see that's the one that's opened up now and we want to delete pretty much everything in here we want to remove the standard turret we want to uh, remove well, we can actually keep this background here to use as a background for our UI and then just build our UI on top of that. Or we could have a flat color. That's totally up to you. I think I'm just going to leave it in here and uh, just remove the main menu uh, object so that we don't have the functionality for our main menu in our level select uh, script. Cool. So now we can just save that and we can go ahead and start building the UI. So let's right click, create UI canvas. And we want to rename this to something like UI canvas uh, or overlay canvas, something like that. I think we want to change the UI scale mode to scale with screen size so that when we scale this up, our UI is going to scale with it. And um, I don't want to necessarily select pixel perfect. Let's just go under the UI canvas in the scene view here, focus on it so we can get a good view and make sure you're in 2D mode. And let's right click, go UI. And let's start by maybe creating some kind of text that is going to say select level. And uh, we want to change this to a Roboto, maybe even the thin one. And we definitely want to scale this up quite a bit. I also want to anchor it to the bottom here. So the bottom left, and let's bump up the font size here so we can actually see this in the game. Want to change the color here to white, and we can maybe also add a shadow, but for now, we'll just leave it as is. And then we'll see if that's necessary uh, later. So I think this already looks just fine. And uh, we can maybe just move this up a tiny bit to make room for our actual UI. So this is going to be our title. And then we can go here and go UI and then panel. And I want to create kind of a, a panel uh, for all of our level buttons to be in. So let's just uh, make sure this doesn't stretch with the scene. I want it instead to just be centered uh, or anchored in the middle. So just click there, no holding down or alt or anything. And we can simply just scale this whole thing down. So I want it to scale down on the Y here. I want it to go kind of far down, something like that. And I want it to be about the same size or have the same starting point as our text. So something like that looks fine for now. And remember, we can always tweak this later. What I also want to do is definitely change the color to a black color. And we can see what that looks like in the game. And I actually want to bump down the alpha even more. So something like that, I think that looks quite decent. And uh, it's definitely um, usable. So this here is going to be our levels. And uh, this is the actual uh, background for our levels. I also want to have an object that is responsible for laying out all of our level buttons, so some kind of grid. I also want to have another object that's responsible for allowing us to scroll through levels. So let's say we have more levels that we can show on the screen. I want to use a scroll rect so that we can um, actually scroll through and we'll also add a scroll bar over here for displaying the rest of them. So um, this is our background. So now we can go ahead and create a new um, empty object under that background and we can just reset that and we also want this to we actually we want this to scale with our parent object so we'll just um, you know hold down alt here and click in the bottom right and this here is going to be kind of our scroll uh, our scroll rect and uh, we can draw maybe just give it a tiny bit on the left here so it's like 20 
on the left, top, right, and bottom, just so we kind of separate it out from our background. I think that's going to look pretty nice. And um, then we can go ahead and create a new empty object under that as well. And this here is going to be our actual grid, or we could also just call it the content. So um, we'll have to link all of these up in a moment. And it's kind of confusing that you have to create the hierarchy in this way. But after having done it a few times, you're going to get used to it. And yeah, it's with every as with everything else in Unity, they have their standards of doing things. And once you, once you get used to them, uh, it shouldn't really be an issue. So what we can do now is maybe um, create a bottom uh, button for our content. So let's just size it up here. And this is going to be automatically sizing to fit our content. So that's why I don't really care about the size here. I just wanted to make it a bit larger so that we can see our button that we now are going to create. And uh, let's just make this say 100 by 100. And uh, actually that doesn't matter because what we'll go ahead and do right away is add a grid layout to this content. So we'll go in here and we'll say we want a grid layout group. And that now allows us if we duplicate this button here, I'm just gonna make a bunch of them. You can see that it automatically lays them out. So that's a really, really handy feature in Unity. And what we'll do is we'll um, just again, anchor this to scale with our scroll rack just to see how that looks. And you can see that already looks pretty nice. And what we can do is maybe keep the cell size at 100, but definitely add some spacing. So I want something like maybe 13 on the X, maybe a bit less. I do want there to be another row. So maybe 11 on the X there. And let's do the same thing on the Y. So that already looks quite decent. And what we can then do to our content here is we can add a um, content size fitter. And what this will do, and it will only do it in just a second, is it will automatically resize this object to fit all of the buttons. So in our case, it would resize to fit like this. And then if we remo uh, remove the bottom button here, uh, it would automatically just bump up here. So that's really, really handy because our scroll rect will um, orient this content here um, and uh, depending on the size of the content. So if the content is larger than the size of our scroll rect, it's going to, uh, of course, allow us to scroll through that. So it's really, really neat that we can get our content to resize to uh, fit the actual size of all of the buttons together. So in order to make it do this, first off, I want to take the anchor point here and bump it up to one on the Y, just to make sure that it will orient itself from the bottom um, um, cent or from the upper center so that it will scale in this way and not scale an, uh, both down and up at the same time. Oh, and Unity is messing around here. I think uh, the Unity our UI system is really, really awesome, but sometimes you don't just get weird behavior like these warnings here. And they're not actually dangerous because they won't actually do anything inside of the game, but you can see just how much they're messing everything up right now. So let's just disable our content size fitter. Let's uh, try and scale this up. And you can see Unity is just going completely crazy here. So I might have to restart. And it's a really, really annoying thing that this is happening. I, I really hope they're working on it. It looks like it kind of stopped messing up there. Cool. So yeah, it's just Unity's UI system. What are you going to do? So what we can do now that we've anchored it up here is re-enable the content size fitter. And on the vertical fit, we now want to put preferred size. And you can see now that it automatically rescales. So if we delete this one, it's going to snap up there. Indeed, it does. Cool, so that's already working. So what we want to do now is of course go in and make these buttons a bit more interesting. And to do that, um, let's just remove all of them except for one. And let's rename this to something like level button. And um, we can definitely mess around with some of these settings. Um, the first thing that I wanna do is change the text object here to not say button, I want it to say the number of our level. So this is going to be our first level. And we can go in here and bump up the font size quite a bit. And I also want to change that to Roboto Thin. I like that look. Something like that looks pretty good already actually. And you can definitely just use white and black in here. But I also thought it could be fun if we maybe uh, tinted this uh, button here in uh, in some kind of color. But it might just be 
Yeah, it, it doesn't look better. I think we should just stick to the very minimalist theme. But as always, I really recommend that you spend some time on it, play around with it, get it to look exactly the way that you want it to. So I'm also going to go into our level button here and add a, a shadow. And just to give it a tiny bit of a 3D feel here to make it stand out. And I'm definitely going to decrease the alpha on that, that channel. So you can see that looks uh, a little better. It just gives a tiny more detail so it doesn't look too simple and dumb. So yeah, I, I really like that. And one thing we can also do uh, is maybe change the hover animation and click, but we can do that in a second. So now let's turn this button here into a prefab by going under the prefabs folder and dragging it in there. And now we can just freely duplicate it as many times as we want, because now when we change, of course, our level button down here, uh, they are all going to update. So that's really handy. And I thought we could um, maybe just see how this looks when we hit play at the moment. So um, you can see that they are currently extending beyond uh, the um, confines of our scroll rect, and we aren't actually able to drag them anywhere. We can click on them, but nothing will happen. And also, um, you can see that it doesn't cut off here. We want some kind of masking to happen so that they won't just, well, uh, be shown in places that they shouldn't be shown. So that's maybe the first thing that we should add is go to a scroll rect here and add a simple mask. And we can make this a rect uh, mask 2D just to make it simply square. Um, and you can see that just cuts everything off. That is without the confines of the scroll re uh, scroll rect. So you can see there it cuts everything off here. It's just a very, very simple effect, but it looks quite cool. And then what we can do is add some actual scrolling. So if we go to a scroll rect and add a, well, you guessed it, a scroll rect, uh, we should be able to now drag in our content and uh, for the viewport that's going to be the same as the scroll rect component so we'll just drag in our scroll rect here and everything else we should be able to leave as is we might want to disable horizontal scrolling because we only want to do that on the vertical so now you should see that when we go in here we should be able to click and drag on these buttons and you can even see how smooth that feels so a really really simple uh, and easy to make effect and we can still click on all of the buttons to activate them so that's really cool and you can even see a bit of hover animation in there so the next thing that i wanted to do was maybe spice up our uh, spice up our hover animation a tiny bit because i think the tinting looks a bit boring so luckily in some of the earlier videos we created this cool hover animation for our buttons and we can just go ahead and reuse that so all we need to do is go to transition and of course i've selected our prefab to change all of them at the same time so go to transition and select animation and we want to turn off navigation and under um and we want to go down and hit add component and add in an animator and this is where we created the controller from earlier called button and this is basically a very very simple uh controller all it does is it has a normal um, animation with a scale of 111 then it has a highlighted animation uh, with a scale of 1.05 and we also have a tiny bit of hover animation in there so you can see that it actually does a bit of pulsating but you can just put a, a single keyframe here for the uh, 1.05 and we do the same thing when we press it so we wanted to go back to 111 Cool. So yeah, that's pretty much all that is. So you can quickly recreate that or go back and watch the earlier videos if you want to see how we did that. So you can see already that that looks just much, much better and feels much smoother. Much smoother. Cool. So um, next up, what we can do is uh, link these buttons so that they will actually transition to a new level because currently nothing happens when we click on them. And in order to do that, Let's go ahead and create a script that we want to act as the central place for doing logic when it comes to selecting different levels. In the beginning, it's just going to have a very simple public method called something like uh, select or load that takes in the name of the level that we want to load. And then we tell the scene fader to fade into that level. Um, but in the future, it can handle stuff like 
looking at what levels are locked and showing a locked graphic, checking if you can actually play that level. It could also dynamically load all of the levels that you have available from an array or something and put them in here so you don't have to add a new button every time you make a new level. It can do a lot of stuff, but for now we'll just have it be really, really simple. So let's create an empty object. Let's reset the transform and let's call it a level selector. And we can go in here and add component level selector. And we can double click on that to open it up in Visual Studio. And that's actually the first scripting we're going to do for this video. So I'm excited. I'm just going to have a sip of water there. Awesome. So what we can do in here is just remove system.collections uh, and system.collections.generic. We're not going to be using those. And we'll go in here and create a public void called, let's just call it select actually. And the function is going to take in a string with the level name that we want to select or the name of the level that we want to select. And um, we could just go in here and use uh, unity engine.scene manager dot um, load level and then uh, load the level directly. But let's just utilize the fact that we do have some functionality for fading between scenes. So in our case, we want to get a reference to our scene fader and we can just call this fader. And then we can use fader.fade2 and then put in the level name here. So that's just going to look a bit nicer. And now all we need to do is find our level selector and drag in our scene fader into the fader um, field there. And we can maybe just drag up our level selector to organize that at the top. So now we can go into our different buttons. And believe it or not, that was all the scripting that we needed to do for this video. So we can go into our first button, for example, we can go down here and add an on click event. And all we need to do is drag in the level selector, go on to uh, the level selector script and select, choose select. And the, uh, <clears throat> and we get a string here that we can input and the level that we want to load is something like level one. And we can do the same one for the second one, except for this one, we want to change the text to two and we want to go in and add an on click event drag in our level selector go under the level selector script and choose select and let's input now level two so it's really 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 simple and we can maybe just delete all of the remaining levels so that we don't have some that will not work uh, they were just for testing and uh, what we can do now is create these levels. So we currently have our main level. Let's rename this one to level one. And uh, if we duplicate this level, it will um, automatically name it level two. And if we now just jump into level two, I thought we would just quickly change something about this level so that we can easily see that um, it's different. So for this level, let's just go in and change our start lives from one to 10. So on level one, our start lives are going to be one. And on level two, our start lives is going to be 10. So uh, that should just give us a clear idea of what level we're currently on. So now if we go back into our select level, hit play, we should be able to go to level one. And indeed it says one lives here. And if we then restart here and select level two, it's going to go to level two no and here we get an error and that's because we haven't added level two to the build settings and this is something you need to do for all scenes just you need to drag them under the build settings so let's go to build settings and let's drag in level two and let's also drag in level select because we're going to be transitioning to that in just a moment so i'm just going to drag it up here but the order really doesn't matter for us so we can hit save again hit play and try and select level two now and it's going to transition and it's going to say 10 lives. So now we, you can just go completely nuts, create as many levels as you want to and add them in here. And uh, yeah, you're going to have a lot of replay value. So that's awesome. Of course, we also want to have a way of going to or transitioning to this level select level scene. Um, and we want to do that from our main menu. So I thought when we hit play here, instead of just playing from level one, Let's just load up the level select and then the user can choose for himself what he wants to play. So let's under our main menu, instead of uh, having our main level as the level to load, 
let's go in here and have level select. So now when you go and hit play, you start at the main menu, you hit play, it transitions to our level select, and then you can uh, choose either one or two, I'm going to select two, and it transitions uh, further. And you can even go back here, if you hit escape, go to the menu, hit play again, we can select maybe level one this time, and it's going to go in there instead. So you can see how nicely these scenes are tied together. The last thing that I wanted to show you is under our level select. And uh, what I wanted to do was just add a very simple scroll bar in case you don't like this uh, dragging around of the objects. I kind of like it, but maybe it's not too intuitive if people have never really seen it before. I mean, on phones, it's, it's really common, but doing it with a mouse is not really standard. So what we'll do instead is go in and uh, let's just create a bunch of test buttons here. So let's just duplicate this one a bunch of times. And let's also go under our levels, this main object, which has our background. Let's go UI and then create a scroll bar. And of course, this is currently centered to the horizontal act axis. So let's go down here and change from uh, the direction from left to right and then instead have it be bottom to top and it's going to automatically uh, rescale it here and then what we can do is maybe move it over here somewhere there looks just fine we can also scale it up like that i think that looks a lot better and of course we need to reference this so we need to go into our scroll rect and drag our scroll bar into the vertical scroll bar field. And now you can see it repositions itself and resizes itself in such a way that it will fit on our content. And when we then scroll to the bottom here, you can see our content scrolls up. And even we can still drag like this and it's just going to uh, move the scroll bar. So they are both interlinked and will uh, interact with each other. So that's awesome. And we can even make our scroll bar a bit prettier because I, yeah, this is not too good. Um, we can maybe take our, this is our background. So we can take that and make it kind of black and very, very transparent. Something like that, just very see-through. And then we can find our sliding area and then the handle. And we can change the color on this also to be black, but um, add a bit more of opacity to that one. So. Now we should be able to hit play and you can see that looks just a little bit better, I think. And we can also even use our scroll wheel uh, to uh, change it. So that's awesome and everything is working. We can go ahead and delete all of our buttons here and you can see that when it's not needed, it's just going to be this, um, uh, this um, what should we call it, uniformly colored bar that you can really interact with. You can of course add a script if you want it to fade out when it's not needed, but I like it being there uh, like this. So that was pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you want to see next. I want to do more with levels. Definitely have some kind of way of transitioning to a new level once you've uh, mastered the uh, the previous one and also some way of unlocking uh, levels which will give us a handy way of talking about uh, saving data inside of unity so i thought that's pretty exciting but of course let me know if i'm going off on a tangent and no no one really wants to see this so yeah thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video thanks to all of the awesome patreon supporters who donated in november and a special thanks to sultan al sharif faisal marifai james calhoun and robert bonham become a patron yourself at patreon.com slash brackies